Roblox is one of the most popular games, well, ever. It's free and can run on pretty much anything. So, with this, many different people gain accessibility to learning about other people's lives and meeting new friends. But what if the friends you meet off of Roblox, the ones that you worked on projects with, the ones that you made memories with, suddenly disappeared? Their only trace being that the joint account you made together so many years ago still has those old projects he never told you about. This video is the story of a channel named Brandonworks, a channel made in 2014 that follows the story I describe. For those of you not familiar with my type of content, this video is an unfiction project slash analog-ish horror kind of video essay. While the channel may not necessarily be an analog horror ARG, these videos often have elements similar to it. But regardless, grab a snack and some water, and let's jump in. The first thing about this channel is its description. This is my channel about my old Roblox friend, Brandon6875935, who hasn't been online in a long time. I'm showing off places on our old shared account, Number369, mostly his own house thing, which I have never really looked at much back then. But I want to go down memory lane now, so yeah, hopefully you can find something interesting. This is mostly just for my own curiosity. The first video is titled Intro. This video expands on information from the description about how the creator met Brandon on Heli Wars Desert Attack in 2008. They usually played with friends like Sony Says So 1230, but this series isn't about them. After they got to know each other, they created a joint account, number 369 to make Roblox games on by taking turns editing. After a while, they got too used to making places on this account because they made some things on their own, without even taking turns to edit. But why are we being told this? Well, the creator just feels nostalgic after Brandon hasn't been on in so long. We also see the last forum post Brandon sent in 2009. So the two must have known each other for around a year. Then the creator continues saying they'll largely be checking out Brandon's solo project, My House Place, that our creator never usually looked at. The creator says that the first few versions weren't too interesting as they were just a slightly modified starter house, but the later versions should be more interesting. They don't expect others to be too interested, but if they are, they can stay tuned, I guess. The intro does lay out what type of series this will be. Going through someone's old creations to learn about them or learn something they may have been trying to express. The description just says, first place showcase soon. The next video is My House Place, version 2. The player spawns with a zombie skin in an old version of the Roblox client. The text on screen displays how our creator will communicate largely through on screen text. I won't bore you by reading every entry. First, the player checks the outside area to look at the toy section. They're all largely building bricks with a sign that says 2 for version 2, and some letters and number blocks that have disappeared. The player also notes all the trees and that there's a few free models in the corner. Walking up to the house, they notice an NPC Brandon and going inside, there's a yellow couch and a TV with a shiny remote saying, don't touch too much. But it's not anchored, so the two separate. The player then notes how yellow was Brandon's favorite color and walks into another door that leads to pretty much nothing. Flying out the window, they check out the broken play equipment that is yellow and black as well. Brandon's favorite color combo. Then the recording ends. The description says, First of the actually interesting versions of this place, lol. Well, maybe not that interesting, but still, I like exploring everything you made. More to come. My House Place version 3 shows that we have more to see in this one. We first notice more items in the toy area, and then a mansion model falling apart and tilting off the edge. It's tilted over the void, hanging just out of reach. The player goes over to the toys and plays with some of them, but also notices a floating sword and a little bug with the rocket launcher. The recorder continues to play around, then dies and tries some different weapons. After a while of playing, the recorder finally checks out the house and notice that Brandon's NPC says, Welcome to my house place. I'm still building it, so go easy on me. Jeez. So, uh, have fun. Walking in, the player notices that there's another Brandon NPC. This door goes to my room, so keep out. JK, you can look around, just don't touch anything. You really don't want to touch the light bins because they break joints. Lol, have fun. The player takes note of this, but decides to first check out all the cool furniture in the house. The stereo system, the fireplace, the arcade machine. Going into Brandon's room, there's a computer, two light bins, and some other furniture along with a TV. Attempting to go in the light bin removes the player's bottom half, but they believe that's everything, so they end the video. This one's kinda messy lol, sorry if the video is a bit long, but hey, what do you expect from the first versions of someone's place? Now this is where I want to put my first theory. 
I don't want to spoil everything, but I think that this video may represent Brandon's creativity and yearning. Many use video games as a form of escapism or expression, something that you have control of, something you're maybe missing in real life. In this world, Brandon has absolute control and freedom to do all the fun stuff he wants. I think that the toys and fun sections display his fun and creativity outside this box he's in. But I think he wanted to make his house that yellow roofed mansion. But it was just dangling out of reach. It's not falling or disappearing, merely dangling. Not attainable and just out of the scope. My House Place version 5 starts with text saying that they skipped version 4 because there was really nothing different or interesting. The player spawns in and sees the free model trees have taken over and the house is upgraded. They also decide to use the yellow bouncy castle they forgot to test last time. We can also see the other Brandon NPC say various messages while the player didn't pay attention. This is where you can usually find me. New updates to make it more like my bedroom. Then, after the player climbs a shelf, definitely perfect for sundowning now, these happen while the player is wandering the main room, breaking unanchored objects. Going into Brandon's room, we see a lot of new stuff. Many of them move toys from outside and things in different spots. Most of it unanchored and causing the player to get thrown around. There's also decal posters and a decal rug outside the room. We can also see the TV that looks like it's if it's playing the show VeggieTales with Larry the Cucumber and Bob the Tomato. Going upstairs, we see who we assume is Brendan's dad, on the couch watching the news and yelling while all the news stories are more negative. The remote says not to touch too much. There's even a hidden shotgun next to the TV and a cross on the other side with another light bin. There's also a parent's bedroom with a bed, the mother and a cross with another light bin. After wandering around a little bit more, the video ends. Disclaimer, I skipped ahead a version because 4 wasn't different or interesting enough. This is where a big update happened. We'll be showing off other places too soon. Obby for Big King or 12 is next and the player shows the latest version from 2009. The player explains that they worked on this one together, but it never finished. It starts with the player off in an end area, which is a bug they never fixed. The player says this was for B King or 12, another one of their friends, and Brandon's online crush. They were called Oh Dears, and no, they were not fentanyl addicts, they were online daters. They made it for her, and there's a head that says Happy Valentine's Day, Brie. This was planned for a Valentine's Day thing, but Brandon snapped out of his online dating phase and and the player says how they built a lot of the crappy jumps. They also lament how the NPC says that new updates are soon to come, but says they likely never will. The player jumps and then ends the recording. But in the bloopers, we see the player fail the jumps, and we can see in place of the head was more of Brandon's character originally. Finally showing off something other than my house place. A crappy hobby me and Brandon were working on for a friend. Didn't get very far as you can see. Stay tuned for more. The next video is Blue vs Red CTF Night. This one has the player in the map with the same name in a 2009 build. This is an unfinished CTF map, mostly Brandon's, but he didn't get far with it considering the bugs like the Invisible Sword and Sparse Map. After the player's long walk to the enemy base, they grab the flag and go all the way back. But then they notice something in the sky near their base. It's a green block, similar to the ones that we saw in Andrew's house, but it's off the map and out of reach. The player captured the flag, but nothing really happens. They then promise that the house will be seen next time. The description says, This one is so empty and unfinished, it's actually kind of funny, lol. Well, get ready for lots of walking, and next time it'll- Get ready for lots of walking, and next time I'll be going back to my house place. So stay tuned, trying to keep things balanced. Next is my house place version 8, skipping quite a bit forward. This one is different because the path is largely gone with a fence in place and the toy area inaccessible with the version stuck on 6. Walking in, Brandon doesn't have a torso, and there's a shotgun on the top of a shelf. The mother is also gone. Brandon's room has a lot more stuff in it, but we see the green brick again. Green keeps the place clean, with the player noting they saw it from CTF. There's also a missing brick on the top ceiling that peers upstairs, but it's also positioned to look at the light bin and computer as if watching them. The player goes upstairs and the bedroom is locked, but the windows are open. There is also more weapons on the TV mantle, and when the player touches the remote, they get put into a wooden box for an hour. The screen says, you're in the dirt room for an hour. Buggy weapons help reveal that it looks like they're in an outhouse outside. The outro has the player confirming it really would have kept him in there for an hour. The description says, back to the house place now. Sorry for the wait on that. Kind of fell for a noob trap on this one. 
Not sure what it was there for, but it really surprised me. So this seems to be confirming more about a sheltered life. We went from a base plate of experimentation and wonder to confinement. Brandon said he wanted it to be more like his real house. I guess this must be close. Something tells me that Brandon lives in a very religious family considering the Christian imagery and firearms. Now that may sound insensitive, but many Christian groups who believe in the idea that there will be an apocalypse or rapture someday to Earth believe that many will die with some ascending to heaven, so they think that they need to protect themselves from the armies of Babylon. At least in some scenarios, many may vary in their reason or justification. I should have prefaced that I'm not a biblical scholar, just kind of interested in cults and religion. The excessive firearms kind of remind me of Waco, which if you don't know what that is, sorry I'd like this video to stay monetized. To me, this just emphasizes how Brandon is isolated. He's in a wooded area, no outside friends, a father panicked from the constant negative news who is now putting that pressure on his family, keeping his wife in her room, barring the window of his son, giving him only veggie tales and some games, but still monitoring him through the crack in the wall. While maybe not literally, it still sounds like Brandon doesn't have much time to do anything without his mother or father, likely father, knowing exactly what it is. This may be why he suddenly got kicked off Roblox, why he stopped his crush, why he stopped talking to his friend. But we still have videos left to unravel more about the story. The next video is Chair Brick Battle and starts with an announcement thanking everyone for reaching 500 subscribers. After the intro, we load into the game and the player introduces it as a place where they wanted to try being random. As the player explores, they say how they created the main structures while Brandon added other things, namely another light bin and green brick. But then the player remembers Brandon calling them power objects or something. That's something I want to come back to in a little bit. Speaking of Brandon, there's an NPC model of him on the top of a tower. The player pushes him over and then we see another one, not labeled, but moving around. He just doesn't have a face. After some more exploring and showcasing, the player jumps in a light bin and evaporates as we see the Brandon NPC in the background. The description is pretty much just thanking everyone for 500 subs. Alright, now the part I wanted to focus on. Power objects. That term feels so specific to be irrelevant, so I looked it up. Unfortunately, my results were not from the most credible sources, in my opinion, but their sites focused on spirituality and shamanism. But when referring to power objects, they seem to be deeply personal objects, either crafted with or imbued with energy. These objects mean to give strength or guidance of some kind, help you connect more, or have as a safety object in some way. Personally, I think it's kind of interesting, but not very realistic. However, from a Christian site I found, ChristianPure.com, the color green can symbolize a connection to God or to find guidance within him and grow. Granted, I think the grow part is ironic considering Brandon's world seems to be shrinking, but regardless, I think it's an interesting start. But now we kind of understand what is with the green objects. They're meant to spiritually connect or protect him against something while keeping his faith in God. At least, I think. It's always possible that I'm misinterpreting something or that my sources may be wrong. So, we need to clearly look more. My House Place version 13 is next, and the first thing we notice is how all the health bars are glitched. Badly. Parts of the house are also falling apart, like portions of the wall being cracked. But going into Brandon's room leads to seeing a black figure, which surprises the player, and they decide to jump on the bed that has a teleport pad. Now he has ended up in a weird place, a large sandy area with a beach house and palm trees and more of the dark figures. He explores the house and we can see furnishings and a door. Then the player jumps into the giant hole in the middle. Going down he finds a long tunnel with a translucent white figure wearing a halo. Another sundowner here to help. With a light bin labeled Captured Light. Interacting with the angel seems to send the player right back home. Looking around upstairs there are more green objects and light bins, but with nothing else noticeable. The player ends the video. The description talks more about how they visited a weird dream world. Before we go to the next video, I'd like to try and take input from other sources. Some Christian sources believe that if you dream of a desert or oasis-like area, it could be that you are being tested, while a cave may mean revelation. Just a possible idea, but not proven quite yet. Next we have Old Unfinished Video. Roblox Goes Mad, Episode 1. The player says in the intro text that this one will be a bit different. 
and that the video has Brandon and some other friends including a random noob. Our creator also says it was recorded a year ago in May, so likely May 2008 or 2009. Through the video we get ASDF style sketches that are broken up by static breaks. We can even see the chat during all the skits. We can see familiar faces like Beekinger12 and Brandon and Ozolog. Something I'd like to apologize with is that I know these videos never convert particularly well, and this video already is in super low quality, so good luck trying to read the chat for clues, if you can see it at all. Or just check out the series after this because it's actually pretty cool. It's difficult to tell what a lot of the text says at all, but some sections are easier to read than others. There are sections where Brandon says he needs to briefly leave, one about a TV, one about his place, and one telling his friends to watch their mouths and not swear. This seems to be some exposition regarding how Brandon's upbringing crept into his gameplay, and why he had to stop certain things. The next video goes back to the house place. The following video is Update Plus Last House Update. This one opens with an update about where the channel has been, then we see the house. It's even worse now. Green bricks with the respawn decal, Brandon's head from outside with the broken bars. The house's walls are full of cracks and blocks shuffled around. A broken home quite literally, closed off from the outside. The light bins have the respawn texture now too, and the number 4 shows up on the wall. The green bricks even say, full cleaning now. There's a countdown, and upstairs the father says, ready, with windows that are boarded up, with more respawn textures, weapons, and crosses scattering around the house. Going back to the bedroom, we can see the pad is updated to a new dream. This one almost seems inverted. Instead of a hole, there's a pillar in the center, with everything being a cloudy white. White figures with the word good above their heads. As the player explores, we can see a gray dance floor and gray slide and seesaw, similar to the ones from outside the original versions of the house. We can even find the bouncy castle. It's all the things that Brandon had, but now they're in his dreams, while being isolated outside. After going back to the house, our creator shows us a poster, How to Be a Good Downer. It shows four allowed steps. TV stays on with authorized DVDs, house stays protected with light and cleaning, check in with crosses every night, and track personal raising progress with however seen fit. There are also don'ts to the list. No touching TV remote without written permission. No unauthorized persons into the home. No outside playtime during countdown quarter. And no premature downing before designated month. After showing that, the creator says the last few versions aren't much different, except the numbers, but we can see in the one with two, Brandon has his arm and head now. Earlier it was only his head and a gray body. However, the last version in mid-November has the entire place reverted to the original house base plate. After that, the creator shows a YouTube private message they were sent about Brandon. The message is someone saying how they saw these videos and thought it sounded familiar to the story of a boy who ran away and his father made a big fuss about it. They also note that the sundowning must be some kind of local legend of the area. They say to message them back if the creator is curious, and we can note that this private message is sent in September 2010. The creator says how they messaged back with the viewer and learned that supposedly Brandon had fled to a relative and changed to a new Roblox username and might be actually able to meet. They also say that they might not upload for a bit, so they have two more unfinished videos that are unlisted, but linked below. The two more unfinished videos project tells us that it's footage of Brandon from Heli Wars and the Ultimate Build. The first one is the building contest sped up. After Ozlog, our recorder, introduces us, we can see the builds. Ozlog built a robot, and Brandon built a tower. A tower with seven layers. Crosses and the green blocks. Brandon also built a giant cube that has a bunch of crosses and green bricks on it. When we see the next build, a PlayStation, Brandon says how he wanted one, but his dad had said no. They look at more of the builds, and the last one has them talking about Heli Wars. Then Brandon puts a green block on it. When asked what he's doing, he just says, clean. He puts a few more down, then says his dad needs him, so he needs to go. After this, we see a Heli Wars montage of Ponage that doesn't seem to show much more of Brandon, but it's, again, hard to tell. While well, we know more about him, let's meet him. First meeting is the next video, where we can see Ozlog and Sony. Eventually, Brandon joins under the new account, CoolBrandon687. However, 
When he introduces himself, he uses proper capitalization while still misspelling, as Oslog notes. But Brandon doesn't feel like answering questions, instead he wants to look around. The rest of the video is sped up and doesn't contain much useful information regarding Brandon, but we learn that Spartan has a part-time job now, one of the other friends from previous videos. Questions is up next, and this one has Brandon on the stage from the first unfinished video, and Ozalog asks questions. The first is about where he was after he went offline. Brandon says he was home for a while, then ran away. He says he disappeared originally because he got grounded really bad. Ozalog then asks if it was worse than the secret phrase. Brandon seems confused though. Ozalog assumes he forgot and asks why he was grounded, of which Brandon doesn't want to say why. Ozlog assumes that's why he ran away, but he says it was because he didn't like his dad and his dad's belief. Brandon also says how he ran to his aunt's house who protected him from his dad. After being asked if he'll go offline again, he responds with if school goes back or he gets bored, he would go offline. Ozlog then asks about the poster in which Brandon is confused, and he says it was just something his dad made him do, probably to protect himself. But Ozlog keeps pressing for more personal questions about the dirt room and the dreams of which Brandon keeps getting confused. Then Ozlog asks one last question. What's their IRL last name? Brandon refuses to say it and Ozlog shuts the recording. Due to his refusal to answer questions and spotty memory, Ozlog must have assumed he was a phony. The next video though is explanation. Ozlog shows a message from the fake Brandon asking for another chance to explain and we see the game. When the faker joins, we learn that he did all of this just to give him some closure, and make him get over Brandon. When asked why he thinks he has the right to do that, the faker says that it's them. Spartan. They have a back and forth where Spartan keeps telling Brandon he's crazy and needs to give up because Brandon just left while Ozlog reports how Spartan is backstabbing him and an awful friend. Ozlog and Spartan continue arguing to the point that Spartan threatens him by saying that he won't be his friend anymore. Oslog says they were already weren't, and that Brandon was his best friend. But then in the join lists, we see Brandon's old account, followed shortly by him walking up to the pair, to the surprise of Oslog. This Brandon says they can only see menu chats, and Spartan immediately thinks it's a fake. Oslog considers it, but starts using safe chat, and Brandon says that his dad is kind of mad. His dad is okay, and so is he. Then he says that he needs to be online. Then he says that he needs to be online, but he'll come back sometimes this week, but he needs to go now. But this leaves us on a major cliffhanger. Is this new one the real Brandon? Was his account hacked like Spartan thinks? Is Brandon okay? Well, we'll have to look to find out. The next video is New Place. This is a new place by Brandon with a castle, and Oslog says he didn't answer his private messages. The castle is much more advanced and different from his other builds in the past, and we find out everything is unanchored, and that's pretty much all destructible. He also fell out of the world and continues to mess around and explore the place built by Brandon. At the end, Oslog shows what the place looked like from the bottom when he fell through, where you can make out the argument there is an O, C, and T. Oslog, come tomorrow, is what he thinks it means. Also also displays a well that someone could get stuck in, and they think it represents a metaphor for something. The rest is random ideas like aliens, a stable meaning instability, and a mailbox meaning a controlled source of information. Week 2 has Oslog rejoining the place, assuming their theory is correct as the place is updated with a lot more builds. There's things like the word king next to a throne, decorations inside the castle, vehicles, foliage, a dance room, the snowman platform thing, another grey building with an X on the top, and pretty much any functional blocks not working very well if at all. Oslog thinks that some of the areas symbolize things like a broken home, not being able to leave, nothing's working. He can't use the TV, feels like he's being watched, and then he can't do anything he wants to do and doesn't feel safe with the prison symbolism. At the end, Oslog says that if Brandon sees this, he wants to help and he wants to understand. One thing I think is the landscape around the house. Namely, the giant mountains and moat symbolizing how Brandon may be physically trapped by terrain and can't see anything. We still need more information before we can decide on a final theory, though. More updates already is next, and this one has Oslog speed up through multiple days of exploring. The first one has Oslog exploring and eventually finding a large pyramid with a golden top. 
day two has a giant sign that says last week party, and see that the edge of the map is closing in, and there's more terraform land with a pillar on the pyramid. There's also new houses and buildings. Day three has more dance floors added around the beginning area and a red sign saying, then clean. The bounce castle is now on a large mountain out of reach and an unfinished building from before has a dance floor and a disco ball held up by water. To the side is a black sign with yellow writing, meeting good soon. The last video is a period. The place is barren now. Even Ozalog's skin is different. Going up to the only structure in view, we see two white NPCs with the word good above them, and Brandon, with only his face and similar dark clothes to Ozalog. Going up to Brandon, he has a text box option. Last update, because I'll finally be with other good when you see this. Go to high level for next life with the last rays. Where will you go? It's a secret, but you could say it's like paradise. Want to learn and even join me someday? Check the site. I am not letting anyone else fall into the link. When will you be online? Well, not any time you'll be able to see. But if any friends still want to chat, you can talk to my other NPC. Why do you have to leave us behind? Well, like I said, it doesn't have to be like that forever if you learn too. The first life just doesn't have the right power. Anything else? Thanks all my friends on here. Please don't be sad about this because it's best for me. See you on the other side, I hope. Goodbye. Turning around, we see another identical structure with another Brandon NPC with no white figures. This NPC of Brandon has pre-built messages to interact on a basic level. Questions and responses about your day or what game you're playing or if you have some problem. When saying that their favorite game is Heli Wars, the husk of Brandon says, Ozo, is that you? Lol, it must be. Hope you still get out there and pwn. So much fun. The rest of the video has Ozlog staring blankly at the Brandon NPC. Until he eventually angrily types, Fuck. The description merely says, No words. That was ultimately depressing. The Brandon Works series seems to have ended, since that was the last upload. But this gives us breathing room for our final thoughts and theories. I reckon it's pretty obvious to most how the story begins and ends. But the middle seems to be where we need to do some uncovering. The story begins in around 2008, when Oslog meets Brandon Works while playing Roblox, and they become fast friends. They even wanted to make sketch YouTube videos with their other friends like Beekinger12, Spartan, and Sony Says So. They all loved the ultimate build in Heli Wars and enjoyed their time together. Brandon even developed an online crush for Beekinger and would build places with Ozalog for fun. But over time, in mid to late 2009, Brandon started talking less and less, and he abandoned a lot of his place projects, a project he was quite proud of with how much he talked about it to his friends. His my house place was his pride and proof of his building skills getting better. But then he just disappeared. He stopped talking on boards and with friends and just wouldn't respond. Thinking that he had abandoned Roblox and no longer had any interest, Oslog wants to show off his friend's work to archive it and his times online. He puts up multiple videos about Brandon's place build and times that they used to play together with online friends. But in these videos, we slowly see more and more about Brandon's life in the place. The place that he wanted to be accurate to his real house and life. We see things like light bins, green objects, weapons, and crosses. Assuming the theory about the green objects being power objects and they symbolize cleansing yourself when growing closer to God, this shows that Brandon and his family may be part of a Christian cult. The words sundowning and being a downer are mentioned a lot labeling a religion of some sort. One thing I want to touch on specifically is the rules that Brandon needed to follow. To never touch the remote without written permission. Considering that Brandon's dad is almost always screaming at the TV, but then says that he is ready in the last version. I think this means that he's ready to sundown, or maybe ascend. We know that his mother has either left the family or is stuck in the upstairs bedroom. I've also neglected to mention what the word sundowning means. Sundowning commonly is known as a syndrome, in which people become more delirious, 
confused or anxious in the late afternoon. In this series, the word is used to explain an act rather than a syndrome. So, assuming this is a doomsday type religion, or a religion that believes they need to prepare for an ultimate battle of some kind, or ascend before it, the word of confusion seems to poke fun at the idea of it. Regardless, the belief makes the father panic and keep the TV on at all times, likely playing TV programs about sundowning or only for sundowners. The reason this must be a Christian doomsday cult is the constant uses of crosses and veggie tales being on in Brandon's room, displaying a belief system either like that or based upon it. The light bins seem to be something meant to symbolize capturing light or purity to surround yourself with considering how many there are in this place. And with how in the Bible light can be a symbol of God, it may be that they're capturing God's essence through the bins to ascend. We also mentioned earlier the possible names of the dream sequences. The first possibly meaning a test, while the second possibly meaning reward or ascension. Then there is how the place changes over time, the symbolism of the toys and fun things being pushed away and slowly being more secluded and entrapped within your own home, because good downers don't go outside when they shouldn't. These changes displayed show why Brandon wouldn't be allowed to play Roblox with his father not wanting him to play with the many friends he made online. His father is constantly watching him, his mother likely now out of the picture, in some way, shape, or form, and his home slowly degrading and deconstructing, an unstable and broken home. We look through these depressing places, showing Brandon's secluded life, but Oslog gets a private message, one claiming to know where Brandon is now. Of course, we know that turned out to be Spartan, and not actually Brandon, but Spartan backstabbed Ozalog. But then Brandon comes back, or a version of him. Brandon makes Ozalog a new place, one just for him to explore and understand more. The castle and domain that entraps him with all the things he wants to do being outside and not functional. The dysfunctional disco room and things just outside of his reach. But in the end, Brandon had already done, well, I'm not entirely sure. Whether it's him ascending, or sundowning, or possibly even being a sacrifice, whatever happened to him, he's gone now. Making provisions for his friends if they ever wanted to talk to him again. A dummy with pre-made responses. Like a stuffed doll with a cord, only resembling Brandon. But it'll never feel the same. This series is great. It's simple and effective. There's no jump scares, no secret organization trying to get you. It's just a friend trying to relive times with one of his best friends. That friend just happened to be in a cult. The humor and editing and all of it made the endings and betrayals hit that much more. Poor Ozalog just sees the slow decay of his friend. The series feels dated. The series feels classic. And it feels homely in a way. Not the period of old internet, but the early internet. Simplistic, a little crude, but homely in a way. It feels like reminiscing on an old memory or friend. I feel like there isn't much I can say to praise this series. The filming and building is accurate, and if you want, you can even explore Brandon's place on Roblox, like you can see in the background of me doing now. Yep, I explored it. It was honestly pretty interesting and I'll try to link it in the description. I wish they had some of the other versions playable, but it's fine. Having one is already above the bar of effort I expected. I really did enjoy this project though, but it's a bittersweet story. If you have the time, I recommend checking out the videos. Even if it's just the gameplay ones, they really hit me in the gut nostalgia wise. Old Roblox is something difficult to make one of these in fiction projects out of and still have it be a good story. I've seen quite a few attempts, some are good while others aren't that great, but I will say that Brandon Works remains one of my personal favorites when it comes to Roblox and fiction. But my friends, I think that's it for this one. I recommend checking out the Brandon Works channel since it's neat to look around. I also just don't know how to end this one, but happy Spooktober and for many more to come. It's been me Moosh, comments, criticism, and suggestions are always welcome. And I will see you later.
arrivederci.